Disaster Recovery Management, or DRM, establishes a really critical and growing in importance technology class. Corporate disaster recovery is as big as a serious business. People spend a lot of money at it. In my IT life, I was in charge of disaster recovery planning for a division of Avery Dennison. Uh, fortunately, nothing happened on my watch. We were ready, or we hoped. We had a plan of paper. The secondary systems were in place. We had good corporate support. But really, when it came right down to it, although we tested as much as we could, there was really no way to run periodic and adequate tests of the DR environment. It was too disruptive. It was too expensive. And a lot of this is guesswork, that it would work if something were to happen. So as they say, we prepare for the worst and hope for the best, but well, we just couldn't be sure. And the corporate headquarters and their corporate data center five miles away from us had exactly the same problem. Now, this experience, even today, that was a few years ago, experience is still common. Disaster recovery is important. Companies invest in backup. They invest in replication and snapshot, failover, more, all hoping that if a disaster does occur, that the system's going to be back up with an acceptable amount of time. Remember, not just the data, but also the systems that the data feeds into. One of the best and most common ways to protect these systems is twofold. First of all, and of course, this is, this is backup 101, backing up and increasingly replicating the data so that you recover, can recover data from current specific recovery points. Second part of this are secondary servers, or secondary systems that can take over from the primary in case of disaster. Now, this might be a local cluster. It might be a secondary hot site and everything in between. But what you're talking about is a system that is supposed to reflect all the application, all the data, all of the configuration on the primary server so that it can transparently fail over if you lose the primary. But here's what happens. Now, over time, and remember, I came out of IT. IT makes changes to the primary environment. Everyone does. You've got patches. You have upgrades, new versions, new applications, bigger and better hardware. Now, the more important and obvious changes are usually made at the secondary sites because people remember to do them. And if it's a matter of clusters, it's probably is very common anyway. But the smaller changes, especially where the secondary site is geographically dispersed, often forgotten about. You're also also usually talking about two IT teams if you're talking about a, few, a couple hundred miles away. This is what happens, and we come to call this configuration drift. Now, clearly the process of managing change to these systems is key to being able to track it and to make sure that the right changes are made at the right time to those systems. Um, however, it's harder than it sounds. Again, you have multiple teams. If you're at dispersed sites, that's a challenge. And you really need to test any sort of change management or to know even what is not being changed. You have to run regular DR tests, the spot configuration gap. That's hard and it's expensive. And the more complex your environment, the worse it gets. Now let's take a closer look at three of the challenges that I, I have already mentioned, but we'll look at them a little bit closer. DR testing, configuration drift, and even once you know what the changes are, being able to fix or mitigate those gaps. First challenge is DR testing. It sounds good on the surface to say, well, just test more often if you know that you've got configuration gap, gap and you know that's threatening your availability. But of course, it's expensive and disruptive. If you're talking about full DR testing that requires downing systems, or if it's a production system which you cannot down, you need to clone it and test it there. Um, you, just can't, you have to clone for 24 by 7 or don't do it at all. And even when you can do it, you run the risk of not being able to bring the production system back up again in a reasonable amount of time. Not to mention, you've lost transactions, you've lost work, and you have the IT overhead for testing in the first place. So what happens is companies, even when they're spending a huge amount of money to attempt to protect their data, especially in high availability environments, they're likely to test when they're deploying new software and equipment. They're likely to run localized tests, or if they have mirrored or are replicating to a secondary system, then they'll test that. But they frequently won't test afterwards because it's so expensive and time consuming. But then you can't trust it. And of course, the more critical the data, the more expensive it is to test, and the less likely you are to be able to restore the very thing that you have got to restore faster than anything else. Now, the next slide is configuration drift, and we'll talk a little more about this. IT, as we've said, commonly makes ongoing changes to primary systems. 
some of the big upgrades, some of the minor ones, and it's really the minor ones because they are more frequent and more numerous. It gets really subtle sometimes. But these things add up when they're not reflected in the secondary systems. And over time, this drift grows to the point that the entire DR process is threatened between systems. So without consistent DR testing, and within a year's time, configuration drift can result in 75% chance of failure rates. And of course, because most money is spent on it, the most complex systems, these are the most important applications you've got to get back. Next slide is closing the gaps, because even when you are testing, even when you know what the problem is, then fixing it can be very difficult. You have extremely complex dependencies between storage, networking, and servers on one site. And if you're talking secondary sites, it's gotten an awful lot more complex than that. But the reality of it is that even if IT wanted to test each separate business service and dependency, you just can't do it. Simulating primary workloads on failovers, making sure that everything is reflected absolutely without question, and doing everything manually. It's just not going to happen. Really, it's not. You've got different storage devices, different applications, different data sets, different technologies, different replication, different backup vendors. And the more dispersed you are, the worse it gets. Now, what DRM does, briefly, is it uses this technology to automate DR testing and change management in DR environments. The more complex, the more useful it becomes. Let's take a look at what the typical DRM workflow would be. The DRM product builds a baseline topology map. Now, it starts by scanning the disaster recovery environment on both sides, uh, whether it's local servers or whether it's uh, multiple sites. Scans the environment to collect configuration data and to perform dependency analyses. Now, this is a very big deal. From storage servers and databases, it must be using its own dynamic knowledge base of dependencies and own configuration issues. Because remember, that's dealing with multi-vendor environments here. The product then builds the detailed topology map from that, uses it as a baseline for any further changes in mitigation. What should happen is that in cases of configuration drift or gaps, that the DRM product should alert administrators with actionable directions and very clear focus on exactly what is wrong and suggest how to fix it. This can take care of 9 out of 10 problems right out the gate because IT knows what the problem is and knows how to fix it. Now, after that, because this is something you don't just want to do and not do again for another year, like manual testing, you want to set the DRM to run at set intervals and on demand. For example, if you're adding new systems or changing configurations yourself. Now, let's take a look at a typical DRM scenario. This is, in fact, a true story, though I can't name the company, but this actually happened. A lot of you will recognize yourselves in this. Now, this is a large financial institution. As much or perhaps more than almost anyone else, besides perhaps health care or other firmly regulated industries, they've got to not only be safe, they've got to protect their data and their customer data, they also have to be in compliance. This is a very important thing. It's difficult to do with that regular testing. Now, they managed it anyway, tested as much as they could, uh, had very large replication schemes in place. They really felt that they had it under control. But they decided to deploy a trial run of a particular DRM package. Now, and this was running over their multi-vendor infrastructure. I'll tell you, the company was shocked. These were very, very sophisticated IT people, very large data protection budget. They were shocked at what happened. There were dozens of configuration gaps, a good two dozen of which would have kept them from failing over in the event of a disaster. By using the analysis, they identified two dozen serious gaps and more. They were also able to mitigate them quickly, even the serious ones, because the DRM product told them exactly where to find it and exactly what the problem is and gave them suggestions as for best practices and fixes between these multi-vendors. Now, they got it working, and they adopted the DRM application. They purchased it. It now runs automatically at scheduled intervals. The particular DRM package also tracks and audits activities so that they can prove that they are in compliance for governance and for regulatory. We really believe that DRM, uh, and particularly DRM that can handle multi-vendor environments, can really help to turn the state of affairs around. 
CRM, although it is an additional data protection software, it in fact lessens complexity a good deal and certainly lessens risk because it can automate the process of a completely consistent replication tree. It automates where they might have been skipping or spending a great deal of money on disaster recovery. It sim greatly simplifies interactions and configuration between primary and secondary systems. And it reduces risk. And as I said, some of them can feed up into framework management applications. And finally, it replaces manual, good Lord, what do I do now, with non-disruptive gap mitigation. And the last thing I want to leave you in is look into a DRM package that offers automated testing, baseline monitoring, um, even service level objective monitoring, um, compliance monitoring, and does it in multi-vendor complex environments. That is where you're going to want to look at DRM.